Right, g'day. Welcome back to The Geek Teacher. This is part four of our uh, little fly swap making game tutorial where we try to uh, teach some of the basics of Visual Basic uh, using iSquish. So fly swap type game. Before I get too much further, you may have seen in all the comment in the uh, details bar below that I keep talking about this place called Copy. Now this is Copy here. So copy.com is a wonderful place and uh, essentially it's an online cloud storage platform. So you get you get to uh, get 15 gigabytes of cloud storage for free. That's forever. Um, it's like with Dropbox, Google Drive, SkyDrive, the rest, or probably even better than SkyDrive. It's available on any platform, be it iOS, Android, or your PC or Mac. So it works there. And it constantly just keeps synchronizing all your files between them. So it, it's a wonderful cloud storage space. Uh, gives you a folder in which you can uh, have all your documents in. So here we go. Look at all these wonderful ones there. There are my programs sitting there. So I can just copy it in here and it automatically uploads to my website. Uh, plus you may have seen that it's built into, um, there are copy actions built in to uh, Explorer as well. It's a wonderful little tool. It's 15 gigabytes for free. Um, syncs without boundaries, big files, small files, 15 gig, that's a fair bit. One thing that it has that others don't seem to have is this uh, splitting the bill with shared folders. So 20 gig folder, sync between four people, only counts as five gig per person. Uh, generally, at least with Drive, if uh, I share one of my folders with another person, the owner actually takes um, responsibility for any of the size that's in there, regardless of who is using it. It's also very secure and protected, um, and CNET really likes it. So head on over to uh, copy.com. Um, actually, before you do that, you get 15 gigabytes cloud storage for free, but here's the deal. If you use my referral, as you can see below in the details, um, you get five, an extra 5 gigabytes for free forever. So that'll take you up to 20 gig, and I get an extra 5 gigabytes for free as well. So it's worth uh, bearing that in mind. Either head straight to copy.com and sign up, or use my referral below and get an extra 5 gig as well it's really easy to use and uh quite quite uh brilliant in what it does um so yeah it works very very well and it's built into into your explorer so enough of that <coughs> here we go where's my vb so moving on with uh, ice squish in our first lesson we added the picture box and learned how to make the uh, score go up and down in our second one we moved that randomly when we clicked on it our third one we added the timer uh, which moves that at a particular time. In this case, it's moving it every second. So in this one, what we want to do is add some difficulty levels and uh, also then uh, make that move at different speeds. And once that's done, we'll look at also changing the score amounts. So in this process, we're going to look at uh, uh, radio buttons. We're also going to look at form level variables and uh, procedure level variables as well. Um, but we'll start with uh, the radio buttons and moving it based on difficulty. So what we're going to need to do, we need to add three radio buttons. So one, two, and three. Just going to widen this. Notice with the anchor, it's moved there as well. And I'm going to whack this wonderful thing up here and this one here. I may actually have to move these later, but that's okay. Uh, this radio button, we're going to say that this is easy. We're going to say that this one is normal and this one is insane. Excellent. So uh, there we go. Let's move those across and make it look good. Now, we're going to name this one RDO for radio button. So RDO easy. We're going to name this one RDO normal. And we're going to name this one RDO insane. How cool is that? There we go. They're all level. Fantastic. Now, when we play this, uh, something to notice straight up is that uh, when I click on one of them, the other changes. So the idea behind a radio button, when it's in a parent control, so this one's on the form, um, regardless of which one you click and what you name it, it will take the checked property to be true and set the other ones to false. So that happens automatically. So when I click on easy, it got rid of normal insane. I click on insane, it gets rid of the easy one. That happens automatically. Now, you can put radio buttons, if you want groups of them, inside group boxes. And so within that group box, it'll do that. But within the other group boxes, they will remain unchanged. So that's also important to understand as well. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the interval on the timer based on which one of these we've selected. So if we have a look at the timer, the interval at the moment is set to a second. And so what that's doing is moving this every second. So easy, we might make it uh, every two seconds. So let's double click on RDO Easy and we get to this check change. So what that means is every time I click on it, it will change the va um, It's picking up that the checking value has changed. Uh, when I click on another one, it also changes. But uh, so what we can do there is set uh, the timer, uh, which is TMI. So what we're going to do is change the timer interval to a slow speed and that's going to make it really easy. So to do that we do timer move dot there we go dot interval because that's a property that we're changing just like we can change the text property in a label by doing time uh, the dot which means that this belongs to that one we can do the same uh, with a timer. And we're going to say that that equals and let's make it 2000 let's just make that 2000 make it really slow nice and easy. Coming back here uh, normal Normal might be uh, might be every second. So we're going to change the timer interval to every second. Now, remembering, of course, that it worked. The interval works in milliseconds. So we're going to set that to a thousand milliseconds, which equals one second. And then we're going to do insane, and we're going to make insane uh, the timer interval. To every half a second. Now a half a second is going to be 500 milliseconds so let's change that check this one to 500. There we go. So now what's going to happen when we play this uh, is that it's automatically starting off like that. Notice I haven't checked any of these but if I put it on easy it gets really 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 slow once every two seconds. Normal takes it back to every second and insane will make it move fairly quickly. So there you go. As per with everything else, if we click, if we drag this, it will change that as well. Okay, so we've got those wonderful things happening. Let's make it so that normal is selected straight away at the start. And we're going to work with check buttons here. Remembering it's called RDO normal. Uh, so that's it there. That's the radio button normal. And we're going to say dot checked equals true. So that will automatically set normal checked to being true. Let's run that and have a look. There we go. It's it's set straight away. So the time is set up straight away. And you could have made that RDO easy, RDO insane to be straight up uh, checked. So now what we've got are uh, difficulty levels based on speed. But what we actually want to do now is make it so that when I click on this, I get more points when it's insane than I do when it's easy. So maybe on easy I get one point, normal I get two, and insane I get five. Let's have a look at how that will work. If I go to RDO Easy, there is no easy way for me here to increase the, um, the scoring because the scoring happens up here in these here on the click. So scoring happens in pick squish click and form main click. So this one adds a score and this one takes it off. So I need to be able to in here figure out what my score is here. Now there are a few different ways that we can do this. Um, but the simplest one is we're going to use a variable and this variable is going to be for setting the score. Um, and uh, so what we can do is we, we've got a few different types of variables. There are procedure variables that occur only within the bracket of the procedure. So what we can do with that is I could say dim my score as integer. Excellent. And then make that equal to 2. And then my score will exist only in here. So every time I click on this, it will create my score as an integer, assign it to 2, and then when it's over, it's over. Which is great, but it still doesn't let me determine it down here. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of this, uh, which only exists within that procedure, or if I put it in there, only in that one. And we're going to make it a form level variable. So what this one does is uh, it creates a variable my score as integer, which is a whole number, remember? Whole number, no decimals, which is uh, what we're going to use as our score uh, multiplier. Uh, dim my score as integer, that allows it to be in the entire bracket of the public class. So notice that its bracketing code section is actually the entire class. So on anything in between 
um, public class form main and end class, that variable will be able to exist, which is really important because what we're going to do is in RDO easy, we're going to make that my score equal to one, right? So we're going to set the score level to one. And in normal, we might make that, what did we say I was going to make it? We said we were going to make it as two. So we're going to set the scoring to two per hit. And for insane, we're going to set the scoring to five per hit. Which is wonderful. So what that means then is that every time I hit in RDO Easy, I'll get a point. If, I, if I'm going insane and I click on the, uh, on the picture box there or I miss it, I'll get five. Now what it's currently doing is actually nothing. It's setting that there, but we actually haven't told the clicking to use it yet. So what we can actually do, see where this one is. That's a number that represents how much it's going up or down by. Now we've got what we've got is a variable that represents how much it's going up or down by. And a variable is simply like a box that can hold a value. So we need to pull the value out of this my score box. And to do that, we simply reference it. So we say my score. And now if I'm on insane, that will go up by five. So that will be five there. If I'm on easy, that will actually just be one. If I'm on normal, that will be two. And we do the same down here. And now we're using a variable to uh, hold our score, which is getting changed whenever we click on it, and then moving it here. So let's have a look at that. It's on normal, and I'm going to try and hit. There you go. Went up by two. Oops, I missed it. There we go. Went up by two. When I miss it, it goes down by two. Hit it, it goes up by two. Insane. I'm not going to be able to, but notice it's going down. There you go. I got it. It's going down by five and easy. It's going up by one, down by one. So we've got basic scores there. Now, obviously, an extension to this may be something along the lines of having it so that you've got uh, on easy, when you hit it, it goes up by one, but when you miss, it goes down by several. Um, to do that, you're going to need another variable here, and you'll set that in your uh, check changes here, and you'll reference it here. Now, I'm not going to do that for you. That's a little challenge to you. Make it so that uh, when you hit um, when you hit the form on easy, it goes down by five, and when you hit the picture on easy, it goes up by one. So you, you're getting penalized for missing because it's so easy. Uh, on normal, uh, you go up by two and maybe down by two um, because that's our center line. And on insane, it goes up by five when you hit the picture and when you miss it only goes down by one. That's my challenge to you. Make it happen. Um, really not that hard. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. I will respond. So that's how we make a uh, fairly easy um, fly swat game with scoring based on uh, levels of difficulty. Our next one, we're actually going to maybe add a timer to it. So you've only got a certain amount of time to get your high score. You've been watching The Geek Teacher. Join us again for more fun and hilarity when we learn more in iSquish. Stress less. Be ninja.